dear students in the previous class i was telling about mathematical relations which you come across in physics frequently so i told you about direct proportionality inverse proportionality corresponding graphs and all also you come across a lot of geometry in the study of physics plane geometry as well as the 3d geometry see here there is an arc ab this arc subtends an angle theta at a distance r say the length of this arc is s then the relation between this arc length this distance are sometimes we called as radius and this angle theta this theta is equal to s divided by r that means the angle theta subtended by an arc of length s at a distance r is given by this equation theta is equal to s divided by r you need to know this equation further in a plane at any point the total angle subtended so in a plane at any point the total angle subtended this is equal to 360 degree this degree this is not a SI unit of angle the SI unit of plane angle is radian so sometimes we express angle in terms of radian also this 360 degree it is equivalent to 2 pi radian so this is the relation between degree and radian an angle of 360 degree it becomes equal to 2 pi radian therefore one radian it is equal to 180 degree divided by pi you know that this pi is 22 by 7 so this uh, 180 degree divided by pi means it becomes nearly equal to 53.7 degree so this is the conversion between degree and radian r 1 degree is equal to pi divided by 180 radian so if you find this value it comes to be nearly 0.01175 radian while uh, solving the problems you come across this conversion in physics as well as in mathematics so you remember these conversions and also in the study of physics you come across a lot of trigonometry so this trigonometry basically it deals with the study of triangles so triangle means it is a structure in a plane which has got three sides and also has three angles so depending upon the length of the sides and also depending upon the angles we have varieties of triangles equilateral triangle isosceles triangle right angle triangle like that you have varieties of triangles so here in the study of this trigonometry if you consider right angle triangle like this so this is a b c in a right angle triangle this angle is 90 degree say if this angle is theta this remaining angle will become 90 minus theta because 
you know that in any triangle sum of all the three angles should be 180 degree this plus this plus this should be 180 when this is 90 this will become 90 minus theta so in any right angle triangle there will be three sides the side which is opposite to this angle this one this is called the opposite side and the side which is adjacent to this uh, angle this is called the adjacent side and this is called the hypotenuse longer side is called hypotenuse so this is uh, the adjacent side this is the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse so in any right angle triangle according to Pythagoras theorem this uh, square of this hypotenuse square of hypotenuse is equal to sum of squares of opposite side and adjacent side that is AB square plus BC square you have studied uh, trigonometry fundamentals at uh, school level so those fundamentals are enough in physics so this is about the Pythagoras theorem and in this uh, right angle triangle if you find the ratio of opposite side to hypotenuse then that is called sine of this angle sine theta it is opposite side divided by hypotenuse similarly if you find the ratio of this adjacent side to hypotenuse that is called cosine or cos of the angle further if you find the ratio of this opposite side to uh, adjacent side opposite side to adjacent it is called tan of the angle and this tan of the angle can also be obtained by finding the ratio of sin theta to cos theta so you can also write it like this similarly if I find the reciprocal of this sin theta that is called cosecant theta the reciprocal of cos theta it is called secant theta the reciprocal of tan theta it is called as cot theta cotangent so you know about uh, basic trigonometric ratios the trigonometric ratios they do not have any units they are simply numbers and uh, the value of the sin theta it depends on this theta for a different angles of theta the value of this ratio differs for example if I take theta is equal to 0 degree if theta becomes 0 then this uh, hypotenuse collapses on the adjacent side the opposite side will become 0 P being 0 the sin 0 will become 0 similarly if this angle is equal to 30 degree when theta is equal to 30 degree the length of this hypotenuse it becomes double the length of this opposite side that means h will be twice p therefore p by h will become 1 by 2 that means sin 30 is half so like that for a different angles of theta these trigonometric ratios they take different values so here there are some angles called standard angles like uh, zero degree 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree 90 degree these are called standard angles so if I find this sine theta as I told you this sine zero is zero when this angle becomes a 30 degree the length of a hypotenuse is double that of opposite side so this ratio becomes 1 by 2 see in uh, uh, in the study of trigonometry in mathematics you are going to find all these values so if you know these values it is well and good in case if you could not recollect these values just you have to remember these tables this table permanently so this is sin 45 which is 1 by root 2 
sin 60 root 3 by 2 sin 90 1 similarly for these standard angles cosine of the angle cos 0 when this angle becomes 0 the length of the adjacent side and hypotenuse it becomes almost equal so therefore this cos theta it becomes equal to 1 similarly cos 30 this is root 3 by 2 cos 45 1 by root 2 cos 60 1 by 2 cos 90 0 if you observe these values in this table from 0 to 90 degree sin theta increases from 0 to 1 whereas cos theta it decreases from 1 to 0 so they vary oppositely similarly tan theta tan theta means ratio of sin theta to cos theta so if I find the ratio here tan 0 it is equal to 0 next so tan 30 1 by root 3 tan 45 1 tan 60 root 3 tan 90 1 by 0 it is infinity so this uh, tan value increases from 0 to infinity when the angle increases from 0 to 90 degree so these are the standard angles for these standard angles these are the values for sin theta cos theta and tan theta if you want to know value of uh, these three trigonometric functions for an angle more than 90 degree then you have to use allied angles formula I hope you know about this thing see in a plane these are the four quadrants 1 2 3 4 so this is the horizon this is called the first quadrant where the angle rises from 0 to 90 degree and this is the second quadrant where the angle rises from 90 to 180 this is the third quadrant angle increases from 180 to 270 and uh, this is the fourth quadrant where the angle increases from 270 to 360 degree so as I already told you at this point the total angle is 360 degree this is 360 degree is made into four quadrants like this so here in this first quadrant all trigonometric functions are positive sin theta cos theta tan theta for all angles from 0 to 90 degree this uh, sin theta cos theta tan theta all trigonometric functions are positive in the second quadrant in the second quadrant only sin is positive whereas cos and tan they are negative and in the third quadrant this tan is positive and in the fourth quadrant only cos is positive so this becomes a 90 plus theta or 180 minus theta so 180 plus theta means it falls in third quadrant so 180 plus theta or 270 minus theta whatever it may be it falls in the third quadrant similarly 270 plus theta or 360 minus theta it falls in the fourth quadrant so in the first quadrant all trigonometric ratios are positive here sin only is positive here tan is positive here cos is positive now in the study of allied angles you have these formulae sin 180 plus theta 
that means it falls in the third quadrant so in the third quadrant the sign is negative so it is sin 180 plus theta it can be written as minus sin theta similarly sin 180 minus theta sin 180 minus theta means this angle it falls in the second quadrant in the second quadrant sin is positive so therefore this becomes sin theta in a similar way if i take this cos cos 180 plus theta 180 plus theta means it falls in the third quadrant so it is minus cos theta so this cos 180 minus theta this also becomes equal to minus cos theta so like that based on in which quadrant the angle is going to fall you have these uh, allied angles formula so by using these allied angles formula you can find uh, the value of uh, sin theta or cos theta when the angle is more than 90 degree for example I want to find the sin 120 degree this sin 120 degree I can write it as sin 180 minus 60 so this is of the form sin 180 minus theta which is sin theta that means this becomes equal to sin 60 so what is the value of sin 60 root 3 by 2 so it is root 3 by 2 that means the sin 60 degree value and sin 120 degree value it remains the same so this is 120 degree so this is root 3 by 2 similarly I want to find <coughs> this uh, sin 135 degree if I find this sin 135 so this sin 135 can be written as 180 minus 45 180 minus 45 it becomes 135 so according to this uh, allied angle formula sin 180 minus theta it becomes sin theta so it is sin 45 which is equal to 1 by root 2 so therefore sin 135 is 1 divided by root 2 in the same way this uh, sin 150 if I want to get sin 150 so according to this formula this sin 150 can be written as sin 180 minus 30 so sin 180 minus theta is sin theta therefore this becomes equal to sin 30 that means 1 divided by 2 so it is 1 by 2 next to sin 180 sin 180 can be written as sin 180 it can be written as sin 180 plus 0 or minus 0 so which becomes sin 0 which is 0 Similarly, if I want to find the angle more than 180 degree which falls here in the third quadrant or in the even in the fourth quadrant, you can take this formula. In the third quadrant, you can take this formula. If the angle falls in the fourth quadrant, 
then you can write it as 360 minus theta. So, sin 360 minus theta. So, this is 360 minus theta means it falls in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, sin is negative. So, it is minus sin theta. Or otherwise, sin of minus theta. Sin of minus theta means it can also be written as 0 minus theta, which falls in the fourth quadrant. So, this is sin theta. If the angle is more than 360 degree, that means after completion of one circle, if the angle is somewhere here, that means it can be written as a multiple of 360 degree. So, in general, 360 degree means 2 pi radian. So, 2n pi plus theta. 360 next to 720 like that so 70 720 can be written as 2 times 360 so 2 times 2 pi radian like that when the angle is uh, very large it can be expressed as multiple of 2 pi so in such a case you can write it as 2 n pi plus theta so, sin 2n pi plus theta means so it falls in the first quadrant where it is sin theta. So, by using this relation you can find value of sin for an angle more than 360 degree. So, by you what I mean to say is you have these allied angles formula when the angle is more than 90 degree up to 90 degree you know these uh, standard angles that means value of sin theta cos theta and theta for these standard angles when the angle is more than 90 you can get those values by using these allied angles formula if you have already studied this formula in school level it is well and good in case if you have not studied then it will come in PUC first year mathematics you need not worry about these things much. So why I told you about this allied angles is in physics you come across these sine graphs cosine graphs like that just to explain those graphs I told you about these allied angles. So if I plot a graph of theta versus sine theta So this is theta, this is sin theta, here 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, 360 degree and then 450 degree, 530 degree like this. <coughs> Pi 40. See, this is 0 0.5 and this is 1. Sin 0 degree is 0, you will get the point here. Sin 30, half. So, from here to here, 90 here it is 45 so sin 30 means somewhere here so sin 30 value is half you will get the point somewhere here sin 45 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 means 0 0.707 so sin 45 0 0.707 you will get here next to sin 60 root 3 by 2 so root 3 by 2 value is 0 0.866 so you will get point somewhere here next sin 90 1 
like this. So this is a sin 30, sin 45, sin 60, sin 90. So if I join these points, we will get a curve like this. As the angle increases from 0 to 90 degree, sin theta increases from 0 to 1. Next, when the angle is 120, it is again root 3 by 2 which means point uh, 866. So this is 90, 120 means somewhere here. So you will get the point here. Next for 130, it is 1 by root 2, 0 0.707. Next 1.5, next sin 90 is 180 is 0. That means this graph, it decreases like this. So from 0 to 180 degree, you will get the graph like this. Next, uh, I take uh, this angle further, uh, 210, next to 225, like that. Again, by using allied angles formula, I find the value sin theta and plot the graph. You will get graph like this. Because this sine 270, I can write it as sine 180 plus 90, sine 180 plus theta, it becomes minus sine theta, that means minus sine 90, which is minus 1. So, from 180 to 270, this graph decreases like this, minus 1. From 270 to 360, say if I take 360 degree, this 360 can be written as a sin 360 plus 0 or 360 minus 0 or otherwise 180 plus 180, you can also write it like that. So this is 180 plus theta which is minus sin theta, that means minus sin 180, that means 180, sin 180 is 0. That means sin 360 is 0, so the graph will be like this. Again, if I take uh, sin 450, this 450 can be written as sin 360 plus 90. So sin 360 plus 90 means it falls in the first quadrant where sin is positive. So sin 90 which becomes equal to plus 1. So it increases like this to a maximum of plus 1. Similarly 540, this 540 can be written as 360 plus 180 which becomes sin 180 which is 0. So like this for every 360 degree, this graph will be repeated. For every 360 degree, this graph is repeated again and again. Since this sine function gets repeated at a definite interval, it is called as a harmonic function. Understand? So for every 360 degree, the nature of this sine curve remains the same. It continues further. So, as it gets repeated, this uh, sine function it is called as a harmonic function. In a similar way, I find cos 120, cos 135, 150, 180 and so on. And if I plot a graph for cosine, If I plot a graph for cosine function, cos 0 is 1, cos 90 is 0, it decreases like this. Cos 180, it becomes minus 1, from allied angles formula you can find this value. Cos 180, it becomes minus 1 and cos 270, it is 0, cos 360, it becomes plus 1 again. So for every 360 degree, it get repeated like this. For every 360 degree, it get repeated.
therefore cosine function is also called as a harmonic function in physics you come across expressions which relate the, which uh, incorporates the sin theta and cos theta for example you know about simple harmonic motion so we derive the equation for displacement of simple harmonic motion is y is equal to a sin omega t that means if we plot a graph of this t versus y obviously you come across this type of graph because this omega t it is nothing but theta angle this omega t is nothing but angle which is written in terms of time function of time so displacement is a function of time or angle so if you plot a graph of this y versus t you will get this step of graph that is a sine graph because this displacement depends upon sine theta similarly this velocity in a simple harmonic motion we write it as a omega cos omega t a omega cos omega t so if i plot a graph of velocity versus time for a particle executing simple harmonic motion you will get cosine graph like this so this motion is called as harmonic motion because the displacement and velocity they depend on these harmonic functions sin theta and cos theta next you studied about uh, various trigonometric formula you come across all those formula in the study of physics here see in trigonometry you have large number of formula but as far as physics is concerned compulsorily you need to remember this limited formula that is uh, this sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 and then 1 plus tan square theta is equal to secant square theta 1 plus cot square theta is equal to cosecant square theta and then this uh, a plus b formula sin a plus b sin a cos b plus cos a sin b similarly if i take a minus sign here sin a minus b sin a cos b minus cos a sin b you come across all these formula so cos a plus b cos a cos b minus sin a sin b so if you have positive sign here you will get a negative sign here if you want to have cos a minus b then it becomes cos a cos b plus sin a sin b and also multiple angles formula sin 2a 2 sin a cos a similarly cos 2a this is cos 2a it is cos square a minus sin square a this is one formula and this can also be written as 2 cos square a minus 1 and also 1 minus 2 sin square a next to sin a plus sin b formula two sin a plus b by 2 cos a minus b by 2 sin a minus sin b 2 cos a plus b by 2 sin a minus b by 
just you pause the video for a few seconds and note down this formula see the trigonometry which i told you so far whether you understood or not don't bother about it because anyway you are going to come across all these things in mathematics as far as the physics is concerned just you remember this formula that works out and also you come across the sine rule and cosine rule see here is a triangle a b c say let this angle is alpha this angle is beta this angle is gamma the length of this side is a the length of this side is b and the length of this side is c the sine rule says that in a triangle in any triangle need not be right angle triangle so in any triangle the length of a side is proportional to sine of angle between the remaining two sides length of a side is proportional to sine of angle between the remaining two sides that means a proportional to sin gamma or otherwise we write these angles like this so i write this as alpha this as beta and this as gamma so now a is proportional to sin alpha this b is proportional to sin beta c is proportional to sin gamma so a is proportional to sin alpha means a by sin alpha is a constant that means this a divided by sin alpha which is a constant that is equal to b divided by sin beta so it is c divided by sin gamma so this is called sin rule the length of this side is proportional to sin of this angle a proportional to sin alpha that means a by sin alpha is a constant similarly b by sin beta is also a constant c by sin gamma is also a constant therefore you can equate them so this is called the sin rule similarly cosine rule see this cosine rule says that the square of length of any one side is equal to the sum of the squares of the remaining two sides minus two times the product of the two sides and uh, the angle cosine of the angle between the remaining two sides 2 bc cos alpha so this a square this length square is equal to b square plus c square minus 2 bc cos alpha similarly you can also write this b square this one so b square can be written as a square plus c square minus of 2ac cos beta so a square plus c square minus of 2ac cos beta similarly this side c square this side c square this is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab cos gamma so a square plus b square minus 2ab cos gamma so regarding a trigonometry you should remember at least this much to understand physics next uh, majority of physics is based on calculus you have integral calculus as well as differential calculus you are going to study about this uh, differential calculus as well as integral calculus in detail in mathematics but unfortunately before these uh, topics are started in mathematics you come across them in physics 
that is why briefly i will explain what is differentiation and what is integration and what are some important formula that you come across in physics differential calculus so here y is a function of x that means this term y it depends on x how it depends we do not bother y anodu idu independent variable idu dependent variable sorry this is dependent variable and this is independent variable y is dependent variable x is independent variable that means y it depends on x how y depends on x we do not bother y and x square irbodu y is equal to x square plus 2x plus 5 irbodu y is equal to xu plus 2x square plus 10x plus 1 irbodu like that somehow y depends on x that dependency is usually shown as y is a function of x we call it as y is a function of x so this is a independent variable and this is a dependent variable now if x changes by a small amount delta x then correspondingly there will be a change in this y so if x changes by delta x y also changes by delta y therefore when this x becomes x plus delta x so changes by delta x that means whatever is there in addition to that this has been changed so when x changes so to x plus delta x correspondingly y becomes y plus delta y so these changes can be represented graphically you can show them by means of a graph say if i plot a graph of y versus x say let let us get this type of graph so this is y this is x so i plotted a graph of y versus y versus x i got this type of graph like this so at some point a this is x and this is y so the coordinates are x and y at some point b these are the coordinates x plus delta x and y plus delta y if i want to find the slope between these two points i have to consider a straight line ab and then i construct a right angle triangle like this abc so here this coordinate is x and this coordinate is x plus delta x so therefore this ac will become equal to delta x here it is y here it is y plus delta y therefore here this is delta y now slope means you have to find a tan theta that means delta y by delta x that is the slope you can get the same slope from this equations also see here y plus delta y minus y this becomes f of x plus delta x minus fx so this term it cancels so delta y it is equal to f of x plus delta x minus fx 
so this is delta y now you divide both sides by delta x so this becomes the slope slope of this straight line ab is equal to delta y by delta x understand so the slope of this straight line is delta y by delta x see if this change is very very small that means a small change we show it as delta x tends to zero see when this delta x tends to zero when this delta x tends to zero correspondingly delta y also tends to zero then this line ab will become tangent drawn to this curve at the point a understand if for delta x tends to zero so delta x tends to zero means this change is very very small almost equivalent to zero so when this delta x tends to zero correspondingly this delta y also tends to zero then this line ab will become tangent drawn to this curve at this point a so if delta x tends to zero then this equation limit delta x tends to zero delta y by delta x this can be written as dy by dx this can be written as dy by dx this uh, dy by dx is called derivative of y with respect to x derivative of y with respect to x or differential coefficient of y with respect to x so this uh, differential coefficient or derivative will give you the tangent drawn to a curve at a given point so ile if delta x tends to zero ab is ab becomes tangent drawn at a point therefore dy by dx which is change in y with respect to x gives slope of tangent drawn at a point again whether you understand this mathematics or not irrespective of that you remember derivative means this is called derivative of y with respect to x derivative means it will give you change of one quantity with respect to change of another quantity when x changes by a small amount how much y would change that is given by this dy by dx so differential coefficient or first derivative means it will give you a change in y when x changes by a small amount 
So derivative means just remember this much change of y with respect to x. So graphically this dy by dx represents the slope of the tangent. Here you see when delta x tends to 0 ab will become a tangent. This slope is given by this dy by dx. So you come across many cases where this type of derivatives or differential coefficients are used in physics. Uh, for example, x1 is a displacement at a time t1 and x2 is displacement of a body at time t2. So x1 is a displacement of a body at time t1, x2 is displacement of a body at time t2. So what is the average velocity? So V average means it is a x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t1. Average velocity means change in displacement divided by time interval. This can be written as a delta x divided by delta t. Delta x divided by delta t. I hope you can see this thing otherwise I write it here. Delta x divided by delta t. So this is the average velocity. So what is instantaneous velocity? Means we write it like this. Limit delta t tends to 0, delta x divided by delta t which is equal to dx by dt. So in one dimensional motion you come across this thing. What is instantaneous velocity means is nothing but limiting value of average value it will give you instantaneous value. In any case limiting value of average value it will give you instantaneous value. So this dx by dt it will give you instantaneous velocity v. So this is average velocity when this delta t is very very small which is tending to 0 then the rate of change of displacement then the rate of displacement it will give you instantaneous velocity. So this is nothing but derivative of x with respect to t. And further you have derivatives for different mathematical functions. So you remember this formula again. You come across them in the study of physics. So d by dx of x to the power of n. So differential of x to the power of n with respect to x, it is nx to the power of n minus 1. Next, so dy by dx, it can be written as a dy by du into du by dx. So change of y with respect to x can be equal to change of y with respect to u into change of u with respect to x. You can write it like this. And you have this formula, differential of a sum. So this is du by dx plus d v divided by dx. Similarly differential of a product. So you keep the first term as it is and then differentiate the second term plus you differentiate the first term and keep the second term as it is. So this is the differential of a product and a differential of a ratio u by v So it is a v du by dx minus u dv by dx divided by v square. So these are the rules. 
sum product and ratio next for a different uh, trigonometric functions like this differential of sin x with respect to x it is equal to cos x differential of cos x with respect to x this is minus sin x differential of tan x with respect to x this is secant square x differential of log x it is 1 by x differential of e to the power of x it is e to the power of x you remember all these uh, formula for different uh, functions you pause the video and you copy down those things so based upon these formulas some questions will be asked like this displacement of a body at a time t is given by x is equal to t square plus or 2t plus 1 find velocity at a t is equal to 2 second in the examination or in the problem section you come across uh, these type of problems so displacement is given displacement is a function of time you are asked to find this uh, velocity at t is equal to 2 second see here velocity at t is equal to 2 second means you are asked to find instantaneous velocity this instantaneous velocity is given by dx by dt this is the formula so this x depends on all these factors so this is d by dt of t square this term plus d by dt of 2t plus d by dt of 1 because this x is like this this is in this form sum so uv form nalli ide idu so angage mooru terms nu differentiate maadi add maadbekagutte now this is of the form this one d by dx of x to the power of n form nalli ide idu d by dt of t square so it is nx to the power of n minus 1 that means this so 2t 2 minus 1 which is 1 that means it becomes 2t so differential of t square with respect to t is 2t similarly differential of 2t this 2 is a constant you can take it outside so 2 differential of t with respect to t it is 1 further this 1 it does not change with respect to time therefore this 1 is a constant differential of a constant with respect to time is 0 so this is 2t plus 2 so this is the velocity now at t is equal to 2 second means it is 2 into 2 into 2 plus 2 that is 4 plus 2 it is 6 meter per second so this is the relation between instantaneous velocity and displacement at time t so from this for, from this standard formula this one you can get the derivation like this thereby at t is equal to 2 second the velocity is 6 meter per second so in the next class i will explain briefly about integral calculus also because uh, uh this uh, calculus is very very important uh, to understand physics
so this is about differential calculus in the next class i will tell you integral calculus and after that i will explain about logarithms so you go to a book stall and ask for this logarithm book for the next class you keep a logarithm book with you i am going to tell you how to use these logarithmic tables and all so we shall continue from here in the next class